All right, beautiful day here at McNee Ranch in Montana. I'm gonna to try to make something of the scene behind me. I'm mostly drawn to this little farm building. And then I also like the bit of fence over here and the trail, how it leads the eye into the distance. And there's some nice shadows on these distant mountains. I'm working on a 16 by 20 inch panel and just starting with the big shapes here. Uh, let's see, this uh, sort of farm building is gonna be over here. There's like a trail that kind of comes up or driveway or something, kind of like this. And there's a bit of corral fence over, let's see, kind of in this area. Just getting the big shapes in place um, before getting involved in any kind of detail. Uh, and I feel like I want these mountains in the back to be a bit more dramatic. Maybe come up right to the top. And actually the mountains in the distance maybe slope off more dramatically, something like that. And I'm trying to be quiet here too because this is a working ranch and I don't want to get kicked out. Such a beautiful day and so much to paint out here. Most of the time uh, it's foggy out here and windy, but today it's just gorgeous. Let's see, something like this. And then there's also a cast shadow from this building. I want to kind of include that as well. So that's the basic idea right there. The big shapes are in place. I'm getting a little bit more specific with the shapes. There's some light trees right here. Um, these trees are actually right here. So I'm moving them over here. I think compositionally it'll be more interesting. And then maybe have some smaller light colored shrubs or trees in there i've kind of tuned up this building a bit uh, there's some nice light on the front of the building i want to be sure to capture that before that light disappears and then as i mentioned there's kind of a cast shadow right here so i've got a mixture of lizard and crimson and ultramarine blue here i've taken off my glasses so everything is a little bit out of focus and i'm squinting as well at the scene and I'm just trying to establish the darks here. I've kind of kept this mix um, slightly saturated. And it's kind of a, a purplish color, but I know that when I get this uh, painting home, it's that purple color is not, it's really not that overwhelming. It's kind of nice. Now let's see, is that right? Something like that, some sort of farm tool right here. And then right here, there's the shadow, the cast shadow from the building. And just trying to lock in these shadows before they change. There's actually only one window on this building right over here, but I'm gonna include, or I'm gonna add a window. It's right here, and there. This side of the building is in shadow, but it's pretty, it's kind of a light value. So I'm not gonna block it in with this dark, uh, this dark value here. I added some titanium white to the mix uh, to lighten up this value here for the shadow on this, on this side of the building. And I'm just going with approximate colors and values at this point and squinting at those shadow shapes. Actually, it's quite a bit of warmth under here. A lot of, uh, you know, warmth from the reflected light off of the grass. All right, so I'm actually losing the shadows on these distant mountains faster than I thought I would. So I really need to work quickly to just sketch in some shadow shapes. Uh, I'm losing the shadows on this mountain too, but not as quickly for some reason. I guess it has to do with the angle to the sun. And I want to make sure that these uh, shadow patterns create an interesting abstract design. So I'm trying to stay true to what I'm seeing, but the priority is getting a good painting out of this. So I will change things if I need to. All right, so I'm scrubbing in the dark portion of these trees in the foreground. And there's a nice sort of rim of light right around the tops, which 
I want to be sure to capture that. But for now, again, going for the darks and mid-tones. I'm paying attention to this shadow behind these trees here because I want the light on these trees to stand out. So I want this area to be dark. It's all going to be in light right here, and then I wouldn't have that contrast, which is something that I am attracted to in the scene. It's a good idea when you're starting a painting to think about what it is you're actually attracted to and what you want to include. Um, and then sort of pay attention and make sure you're not losing track of that which attracted you to the scene. All right, so I've got the shadows locked in. The bottom portion of this painting is fairly straightforward because it's just, you know, a lot of green and then just uh, sort of a yellow ochreish color for the trail. And the light on this portion is not really changing very quickly, so I'm not in as much of a panic <laughs> regarding this area. And I am trying to just cover the panel as quickly as possible. I consider this an exploratory painting, just experimenting with an idea. All right, for the sky, I've got a mixture of ultramarine blue, titanium white, and a touch of phthalo blue. Paying attention to the value of the sky. Even though I'm just estimating colors and values at this point, I do want to try to create a feeling of light during the scrub in. And so I'm paying attention to the value relationship between the sky and the light portion of this building. And the sky is slightly darker than the front of the building or the light portion of the front of the building. For the road here, I'm using a mixture of titanium white and yellow ochre. I've got a little bit of burnt sienna in there to push it towards red. And there's also a bit of blue in my brush because I didn't clean it completely. And that blue is actually helping to kind of gray down the mixture a little bit. Sometimes a dirty brush can actually work in your favor. These are things that I've learned by working really quickly and spontaneously. And so far I've had a few people come by and everybody has been really nice and Kind of excited to see me here painting so that's cool so i don't think i'm going to get kicked out which is great because i'd actually like to come back i see other potential compositions here all right so i've got a dull green mixture here for the light portion of these mountains in the distance paying attention to value again i'm realizing that i'm going to need to lighten up uh lighten up the sky maybe a little bit because even though these mountains are in light, they're darker than the sky. Going in with thicker paint, and I've got a number six natural bristle flat here. It's a brand new brush too. So it's got really long bristles, holds a lot of paint. And I'm just gonna adjust the value of the sky here. And the sky does get progressively bluer as it goes higher, more towards an ultramarine. I did use a little bit of liquid during the scrub-in, but now I'm just using the paint straight out of the tube, not thinning it at all. All right, so I want to establish the shadow portion of this building because I have a feeling it's going to get lit up shortly, so I want to capture the color as best I can and it's really difficult to figure out what the color is. I'm going with a sort of purple mix but then I've added some yellow to it uh, because there is a lot of reflected light in this area. Actually and under here there's a lot of yellow right in here um, but this side is less yellow. All right, so boosting the yellow in this area, but I still want to keep the value fairly dark. A lot of green reflected in here. I'm going to have to make sure also that I lighten up the grass so that this portion looks like it is in shadow. All right, I've decided to establish the lights on the front of the building here using a mixture of titanium white and a touch of cadmium yellow medium. And I've kept the mixture pretty thick 
again trying to capture this light effect before I lose it and as you can see this number six is kind of a big brush for the job but I do want to use it because I don't want to get too careful I want this painting to feel loose and spontaneous there's a brick wall right here which is an opportunity to get some red and orange into the painting the spring greens are really bright kind of like an electric green almost or fluorescent um, so I am toning those down a bit with uh, some alizarin crimson I always try to get some red into my greens but and I also I do want to leave some of the transparency of the scrub in here okay so there's a distant fence here I'm just gonna kind of block in the shadow portions of this fence first and then I'll come on top and suggest some light there's a bit of light on the top of it and then also in this area over here quite a bit more and I feel like by having light over here it'll sort of balance out the composition I'm primarily focusing on these shapes and what they do compositionally I want to represent the scene but I also want it to work on an abstract level as well getting the color and the values of the greens can be a real challenge it's a fun challenge though I'm actually noticing quite a bit more yellow in these greens I used to lighten my green mixtures with titanium white and it would just cool off the mix too much so whenever I'm dealing with greens I'm always trying to be conscious of that and kind of warm up my greens uh, that's why I'll use alizarin crimson a lot of the time the alizarin crimson does a nice job of warming up the greens all right so I'm going to experiment including some tire tracks and a few grooves in this path or this uh, road before I go in and add some lighter lights okay I like the light portion of these distant mountains but I'm gonna lighten up the darks with a sort of dull purple mixture I uh, started with dioxazine purple and titanium white and the mix is a little bit dirty so it's kind of grayed down just because my brush again my brush is dirty and helping me out <laughs> some of these edges here are soft as well I don't want to have um, you know a lot of hard edges in the distance I want this uh, mountain to recede all right so here's what I finished up with I ended up spending about an hour and a half on this painting I have not done any touch-ups um, I'm not sure if I will do any touch-ups on this actually I think I might just leave it the way it is this light portion right here along the the door I might straighten that out a little bit and I noticed that the windows are a little bit crooked oftentimes I'm tempted to straighten up things like that but I'm gonna live with it for a while because often when I do straighten up things or clean things up too much there's something lost in that process so what I like to do is let the painting dry and then I can experiment with uh, these slight changes and if I don't like them I can just wipe them off and I'm back to the original painting all right so I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you think in the comments if you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel there's a patreon link down below it's the patreon support that helps keep me making these videos and it's much appreciated also I am currently in a group show at Studio Gallery in San Francisco, uh, and my contribution to that show is a 24 by 30 inch seascape of Pescadero that was painted in one of my YouTube videos. So I will post a link to the show down below and then also the video in which that painting was painted. So check it out. Other than that, stay creative. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, somebody came to keep me company here.